Our next guest can make your home look like a million bucks for practically nothing. Here with how to step up your design game with things from the dollar store. Yeah. Give it up yeah. for Aaron Meyer from Lemons Lavender and Laundry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready? I am because you know you gotta love the dollar store. Sometimes there are some treasures. There are, and Here, sometimes all right. Over there, yeah. Sometimes the things that you don't really think are gonna be treasures can be turned into treasures. Okay. So we're gonna start off. Um, we are working on a bedroom makeover, like master bedroom. Um, it's kind of been on pause. The summer's been busy, yeah. but the first thing I did was make over a dresser. Uh, we have had it. Our anniversary is in a couple weeks. Happy 18 anniversary. years. Thank you. 18 and so, years. Yes. Congrats. Thank you. Yes. Um, and our dresser is that old. So the it was. Is 18 years yes, old. also. <laughs> yes. This actually is my son's because my dresser would take up half this table. But yeah. um, so the first thing I wanted to do, I painted it white and distressed it. I painted all the drawers blue to kind of add a little pop of color. I like that. But what I wanted to do was add a little pattern in a drawer liner. So my first thought, this is my son's drawer, and I made these four years ago. This is wrapping paper covered with contact paper. So you can use like anything. And I wanted a black and white floral patterned drawer liner. Yeah. And guess what is at the dollar store? Oh, oh, so, so you can go and find, and if you don't love this pattern, there's other ones there. And then my little tip is as you measure, some contact paper can be super sticky. So if it st sits there for years, it will just like rip the stuff off your drawers. Yeah. So just cut the backing off just the corners after you measure it, and then you can just set it in. It'll stay in place, but you don't have to have the sticky on all oh, of it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yes. Because, yeah. That could get, yeah, like that. This is the Yeah, so those are my drawer. That's the white dresser, and then the blue pops, and then we put in the little, or I put in the little drawer liners. I love that. That looks like, I'm not kidding, that looks like something you would get at like Pottery Barn or, you know what I mean? That looks so good. Oh, look painting, at you. painting seriously can just change anything. Yeah. And it's an painting easy project. Painting and then the hardware, just yes. change the hardware yes, in the front. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the next thing in that same section right above the dresser, it was a big blank wall. And so I wanted to put a gallery wall. If you don't know what that is, it's like a, a whole bunch of frames or items all together to create sort of an artistic piece. So, yeah. I actually was inspired by a Instagram account called Vintage Port. She had used these same frames to create a wall. So I decided to kind of, I went a little different route. But so at the dollar store, it will look like this. And they're meant to hang as is. Um, but this isn't really my style. So what I do is no, I pop. What is that, by the way? Well, I think it's umbrellas on the sea or okay, something. That's nice. So what you do is you're going to pop out that print and the glass. And the reason I take out the glass is it eliminates all the glare. Oh. And oh. it also makes this super light. You want to feel? Oh, I mean, yeah. so what you can use mounting squares to put this up. So what I did was I went online. There are various sites. You can buy them off Etsy, but I went to a site that was selling like 16 vintage botanical prints for 10 bucks. So I went ahead and printed those off, added them into my frames, and then created a whole gallery wall. And so the whole thing was 30 bucks versus doing like a, even a big framed piece or a sign or Hundreds something. Hundreds of dollars. So that's the before and after. That's really like the before of the dresser. And the after of the gallery wall with the dresser and everything on it. Erin, that is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, there's there's the whole gallery wow. wall. Wow. Wow, that is really beautiful. And even that lamp, that was a goodwill find that I painted. Oh, seriously? Yeah. That is so beautiful. I Thank love you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I might do that. But I don't know how you hung those so perfectly. Well, you do, oh. you just you just measure and level. It's so, it's I actually know. not as hard as you would think. I know. Colin and I, when we try to measure and hang pictures, it looks like War of the Roses <laughs> up in there. Yeah, well, it's... I have a whole tutorial on how to do this on my blog, so you can go follow it done, step by done. step. <laughs> All right. So the last thing are these bins. Okay. So if you go to the dollar store, it will look like this. Yeah. They're always bright colors, and um, so unless you're doing a kid's room or you love pops of color, yeah. you can totally transform these. So this is what we did for our coat closet. So we have like, I found these little tags in the hot spot at Target, six for a buck. Yeah. And so we do hats, scarves, and mittens. 
this, these are ones I use in my bathroom. These are actually two for a dollar, so I just label them. Um, so a couple little tips, because I get asked questions about spray painting plastic a lot. So the first thing is, if it has texture already, you can go ahead and spray paint. Like the inside has texture a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So the spray paint will adhere, but you have to find plastic or spray paint that says it can be used on plastic. Okay. Otherwise, it tends to chip or peel. Okay. If you have glossy plastic, like is on the like outside this? of this bin, okay. use a little sandpaper before you spray paint it to kind of rough it up a little bit so the spray paint adheres better. Got it. And then you just have to be this. Looks like something out of Vegas. Right, right. Yeah. And then okay. now it kind of looks a little bit more like Rustic metal. Yeah. And more adult. Right. And not like it's from exactly. Marie Osmond's uh, dressing room at the Flamingo. <laughs> yeah, there we go. More with Aaron Meyer, including some cleaning tips. Using some of the usual items when we come back. Back after this. Like ketchup. What the hell are we doing ketchup? Aaron Meyer from Lemons Lavender and Laundry. Do you mind? We talking about this. That, what, what's that? What we think we know the website to get these graphics. Okay, I think it's either the Graphic Fairy or just Graphic Fairy. But I think if you Google Graphic Fairy, you're gonna find it, and, and that's can, where you can get those. All of these different types of graphics. We and I was I was saying too during the break that if you're not into the vintage botanicals, it's like you could do if you're architecture, you could do blueprints. If you love travel, you can do maps. Like you don't have to do just that. Yeah, Graphic Fairy or. Google it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, we have dollar store tips. Now we're doing, we, when, whenever Erin's here, we have to get her cleaning tips because y'all yeah. love them. We love them. What are we doing? All right. The first thing, now we're pretending this is silver because really I think this is stainless steel. But, yeah, same thing. Uh, so, but if you have silverware, which I borrowed from my parents when I did my original post, um, you can polish this with baking soda and boiling water, and that's all you need it. So it'll cost you two cents to do it. What you're going to do is you have to have an aluminum pan. And others have told me that you can also use aluminum foil if you don't own an aluminum pan. Okay. Then you're going to lay your silverware in a single line. Okay. And you're going to literally douse it with some baking soda. So pour on like a good heaping pile on there. Now, I don't have boiling water with me today, yeah. but when you do this, they don't let me have boil that some water. <laughs> Pour it over, okay. and there's some sort of wonderful chemical reaction. Let it cool. Obviously, use care, caution your boiling water. Let it cool. Take this out. Use a flour sack cloth, and all that tarnish will come off. I had a friend of mine who did this, and she said, my mom told me I actually polished it too much. And I'm like, eh, but it was just serious. So there's the before and after. That was my parents' real <laughs> silverware. That is crazy. That is crazy. That, yeah, so that that was not like fake. That's, that's like those old Tarnex commercials in the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, look, it's magic. Yeah, anyway, I and, love that. But for like two cents, two probably. Two cents, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next one is um, removing rust. So um, I. I don't know about this one, Erin. <laughs> I, I yeah. borrowed my, well, not borrowed. I used a hammer in our house and then I left it outside and it rained and it got rusty. Okay. So I tried this little tip. So you grab some ketchup, and you're going to literally like just put a good, generous quantity on your rustiness, and then let it sit there for a couple hours, and then you're gonna rinse it off, okay. and the rust like will come off. And if you have any really tough spots, you can do it again. But literally, to okay, I think we have a before and after, right? I think right? we do. There we go. What? Are you serious? Yeah. The white part is paint, so that was the Yeah, white. yeah. That is crazy. Ketchup? Yeah. I think it's the acid from the tomatoes, kind of. Does it matter the brand? I don't think so. No, I don't. So. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I, okay, I'm a believer. If y'all right. tried it, let us know. And finally. All right. So the last one is burner grate. So if you have a gas stove, you probably have these sitting mm. over your burner. And they are not very fun to clean. No, because they are not. It's because it's oftentimes like oil splatter, that doesn't come off with just soap and water. So I found the best tip is you grab your burner grate and you're going to stick it into a Ziploc bag, okay. if I can actually get it in there. Okay. Well, we'll just pretend it's in there. You're going to grab a quarter cup of ammonia. Now, if you've ever smelt ammonia, it's the worst smelling stuff ever. So use this in a well-ventilated area. Yeah. 
So you're going to add a quarter cup of that into the bag and then seal the bag, put it on a baking sheet because it tends to leak for whatever reason as you do it, but you're gonna actually let this sit overnight. The next morning, it will literally, all your stuff will just basically rinse off. If you've got a tough area, you can use a little scour pad, but it will, it will be like brand new burners. Real, oh, just ammonia. Yeah, there's the before and after. There's another before and after, everybody. Wow. Because they are, that is a pain in the blank to try to clean. It's, they're awful. awful. Probably one of the worst things to try to clean in the house. And you don't, the, vinegar, or the ammonia, I'm sorry, does not have to like be touching it. It's just as long as it's in the bag, it will work overnight and you, it will come off really easily. Or use ketchup. I'm just joking. <laughs> Give it up for Aaron, everybody, for all of her tips. Head to Women's Lavender and Laundry.com. And don't forget, you can watch this a little bit later. Our repeat is back. You can watch us on Fox 9 Plus if you missed this episode at 3 p.m. or catch our full episode on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today.